Hello to everyone and welcome to another marine engineering uh, discussion, questions and answer from Adventure Story. Welcome guys and thank you that we will stay together one hour again. So the connection is clear. We have one person here very nice and we'll start our, our discussion very quickly so it's 10 o'clock evening oh four guys very nice oh the guys was waiting <laughs> very nice so we can start our question and answers with adventure story I have a lot of stuff here. Hello, Andre. Hello. Good evening. Mm. <laughs> Hello. I will fix it a little bit here. I have my stuff a little bit. Good evening. Greetings from Lithuania. Hello. Hello, Lithuania. Very nice. It's raining there in Lithuania. How it is the weather? It's cold coming from Arctic Sea. Laurinas. Or it's hot. No, it's not so hot for sure. Now we have a, a weather change also. Cyprus. Oh, Mahmoud from Cyprus. Hello. Very close to Greece. Good evening to everyone. Good evening. Cyprus is really, really close. Greece, only maybe 20 hours by vessel. But better by airplane. Next week will be rainy, for sure, for sure. We are going to November. November and December, the most uh, nice months to stay at home. But me, I will stay until January. Catalin, good evening. I have a question. It says in the procedure manual for starting off OFB that you have to replace that auto flame scanner with manual flame scanner what is the manual flame scanner you mean for the boiler for auxiliary boiler the flame scanner ofb what is ofb the weather in greece uh, today was fine was about uh, 20 degrees 19 to 20, but it's fine. It's very nice. It's calm. No any wind. It's really, really enjoyable this uh, weather. Yes, for oil fired boiler. Also, auxiliary boiler. This auxiliary boiler is from Alborg, made Alborg. Catalin, can you explain? This is uh, from Alborg. Ah, yes, okay. Alborg have uh, two flame scanners, uh, as I remember. But really, I will check that for the manual. Ah, yes, maybe this is a procedure, yes, for the manual starting, and maybe this is uh, the emergency procedure, if uh, this is correct that I'm talking. Because uh, I believe, if I remember correct, that if you use an emergency situation the boiler, there is only one uh, flame scanner uh, working and this must be the one which will be activated so the sequence will be follow uh, next uh, for the firing if there is no flame uh, Proper, probably there is no activate of uh, some solenoid. I, I must also to check that one really uh, to check the sequence and how the emergency sequence working. Uh, my name, Andre, it's uh, Mike. My name is Mike. 
And your question catalog, good. Uh, okay, it says a procedural manual. We have to replace to auto flame scanner. Really, really, I will check uh, the reason for doing that. If somebody knows exactly, uh, we can also write in the comments or here in the communication on the chat. But really, I will check you. So it's very nice question. Uh, thank you for that. I will try to check. Also, it's very nice because like that we can find uh, and will cover our uh, knowledge much better. And also, I like to thank you and also for the Alborg. Uh, the most things that also I need to cover is uh, the electrical part and all the system, how it's working. It's very nice. I have attended also uh, to an Alborg seminar. I have keep uh, this uh, very, very important uh, handling operation. But as you know, uh, mostly on board the ship, we are operator. Okay, sometimes we need to find some solution. And also I like to discuss with uh, electrician about that. Uh, some things also I ask if I don't know and we discuss about some problems what it's uh, the possible problems that can happen okay georg borasano hello mike have you ever heard about nc nsc shipping company really i didn't hear about that but there is a lot of companies really uh, you, we can share this on the online about that company, but I can check, I can take a look for you and maybe I will understand something shipping, yes. I will check it right now I have about this company. This is Greek company. Uh, Berosano, this is Greek. I will check, okay, I will check. Uh, from the website, it seems uh, quite a strong company. They have, they say that they have 2,000 uh, seafarers employed. Uh, if I can check, okay, the Hamburg. This is a German uh, company. As you can see, they have a lot of offices, German company, yes. A German, they have for sure good standards. And I like to see the fleet. They have a lot of offices all over the world. I like to see the fleet. Yes, they have a lot of ships, plenty of them. They have container, a bulkier, car carriers also. Uh, there is a lot of chance to find uh, some job there for sure. And they're built, they have new built ships, yes. Let's see the tankers about. Mostly it's 2010, 2010 and small dead weight, but it's okay. Interesting. Seems interesting. So you can try it, you can check it. Maybe they have uh, some interesting trips because this kind of vessels, as I can see the dead weight, uh, probably they have a lot of ports. Uh, and this is also interesting. This is one of interesting part of Simon. But uh, for me, uh, VLCC, it's never, <laughs> coming uh, close to the ports. Okay, uh, Panos, I, I have uh, the second engineer license uh, from 2012 and I need about nine months to complete to chief engineer. Uh, nine months of sea service and after one month on uh, KSN, you know this uh, KSN uh, where we take our license to make uh, this certificate and after uh, I believe I will cover also my technical and uh, also the knowledge that we need for handling uh, the people on the engine room. 
Uh, when you start and they work, uh, when you start work on chief engineer position, uh, yes, I like to start really. I like to manage people uh, in proper way. So I, I already answered to that question. Also, Panos told me uh, the same question. So let's go to Varma. Hi, Mike. Could you explain a good method to lap? fuel valve of the hatch generators maybe in some of your videos later big fun thank you thank you varma okay we will we will say in short that uh, very very important that i have seen also and with my experience uh, the most important is the cleanless it must be uh, very very clean and the lapping procedure as we know we make eight Eight, we take the nozzle and also the surface. Let's say this is the surface, okay? And we'll take the nozzle and we make eight like that. Let's show you like that. But very important is, uh, let's say if you have this is the surface, this is all the surface of uh, the fuel uh, valve, and this is the nozzle that we attach. We must be exactly uh, move the nozzle on this surface. We must not take it out so much and move on the parts here around on the edges because we can scratch the surfaces and we can make also deep scratches, which is not uh, really acceptable. So keep clean also uh, all the table that you have and all the tools. It's very, very, really important because the nozzles, as we know, have really, really small holes which can stack and plug easily. So let's go to Robson when we check batteries for good conditions before any checking switch off the charging. Uh, yes, correct. This is uh, the best method. Yes, correct. I have observed some people didn't do like that. Uh, this is a, a mistake that they do, I believe, yes, because when you charge and you measure the battery, you also measure uh, the supply power from uh, the charger. So I have experience that in one vessel we tried to start a diesel generator and there was not any power. And we was lucky because we can uh, take the batteries from the live bolts. This is, was a, a trick that we make uh, in case that we have emergency. But the order was made from chief engineer. As I remember, I was apprentice engineer. And this was my second uh, trip with vessel. So you have right uh, for check batteries must switch off the charging this is proper uh, proper checking and maintenance of the batteries and very important is always to send your electrician to check the batteries so if you have any problem if you encounter any problems uh, you must order and you will be also covered from the inspector in any case that uh, if there is any problem of starting of live bolts or emergency diesel generator. But anyway, emergency diesel generator, it's possible to start also with hydraulic uh, power. So let's go to the next question. Do you ever encounter with the steering gear system on board, especially two RAM type? Really, Cidic, I didn't encounter any problem with steering gear, uh, even loss of oil, even some leakage or some power, power failure. Really, I didn't experience. But I have uh, listened that some people have experience, and also I have made a video uh, with that information that I have obtained. 
And also, I keep always, always this information because it's uh, really, really interesting. And also, uh, to do not encounter any problem, you must be very, very careful in such systems that uh, the filters, it will be changed uh, properly. Uh, there is also maintenance and checking of all moving parts of uh, the system. And also very, very important is uh, to make any tests, like to switch on emergency uh, motor at the moment when the ship is stopped and do not make uh, any tests that is not necessary, okay? let's say to make some tests uh, before arrival and before departure is normal okay the ship is on an anchor or there is not strong currents but if we have bad weather it's better to avoid to make such testings it's very very important so you understand okay uh, that is my experience and that i also like to pass for you so let's continue with the questions. Uh, Panos, Mitsubishi, Mac, B, or Albog boilers? Which one you prefer? I have never have done with Albog. Uh, I have listened, okay, with Mitsubishi, I have not done also. But uh, I listened from other engineers, they told that Mitsubishi is far the best. And also, uh, when I attend the Alborg uh, seminar, which company sent me there, uh, this guy told that the 70% of all boilers it's Alborg, but he told that Mitsubishi it's much better, and also the cost of Mitsubishi boiler is like two Alborg boilers. This is the difference, and you can imagine uh, the total cost for the company to have uh, two Mitsubishi boilers or one Mitsubishi boilers. I don't know. Uh, Panos, in your company, how many Mitsubishi boilers you had. But from all engineers that have worked with Mitsubishi, they told me that it's much, much better uh, than Alborg. And also, I have observed that Alborg, uh, 10 years before, uh, these boilers were not, not for marine design, but slowly, slowly, they improved them. And now Alborg boilers, they are uh, in good phase. They have solved a lot of problems and update the boilers and upgrade them so far. So Varma, thank you for the answer. What is the best way to remove heavy oil contamination from jacket system if there was been heavy contamination from one of the fuel valve or generator? Uh, fuel contamination, Varna, Varma, as I can understand, can be if you have uh, cooling with uh, water, okay? That uh, I understand, okay? And the best way for me is, it's a little bit difficult this procedure to do. So if you have a voyage and you need to continue, uh, if there is a tank, a cooling tank, that all the returns go back it's better to put some uh, oil absorbers there or uh, another way is to add some chemicals and to break this oil if it's available something like that i really i didn't counter that phase but i have a cooling system for one engine that i counter here in uh, passenger vessels that we have cooling with water. And then there was a visible return pipe. So all the water which cooled down the fuel valves return back. And from there, there is a visible uh, of the water returning back so you can determine the problem. But really, I believe if you have a fuel contamination inside of the jacket water system and you drain all the water, the fuel still will remain and will be attached to the surfaces. This is uh, for sure. So you will need or a cleaning 
uh, agent to add there so the fuel will be dissolved and circulate with the water and one place that you can catch this fuel is on the return tank that you can place oil absorbers and the water is circulated always with some agents which will dissolve the fuel inside the engine because as i can understand uh, the generators and all the system uh, there is a circulation system and it's probably really really long so it's really really big problem uh, to have such contamination because uh, all the parts inside will be dirty all the compartments of the jacket uh, will be dirty and i don't know for the cooling how this will change all the situation of the engine how it will be uh, if you can share varma if you have this experience uh, what problems you encounter after the contamination we can discuss it also uh, laurinas do you have any experience with mitsubishi separators i heard that they are problematic yes uh, uh, Mitsubishi separators really it's hard it's really hard because uh, all the o-rings all the things that you remove must be placed exactly all the bearings uh, the measurements must be exactly so the separator will work without any problem and do not really do not be very very quickly with that separator and before you make any overhauling of these separators try to measure uh, the distances before you dismantle everything uh, and also in my previous videos you can check some details that i explained the reason uh, of some parts uh, which must be cleaned and what is the reason of that because some of the dirty which is attached on some place can change the dimensions and the assembling of the parts also uh, can encounter a problem all the play all the things all the parts the spare parts must be really really clean and uh, this play this plays a lot of uh, role really so these separators uh, really i don't like them uh, if i tell you i prefer more uh, alpha laval but all the separators and also alpha laval mitsubishi have some things that you must be alert and that i have seen from my experience that a proper use and if you listen carefully uh, and read the manuals you will be much much better because i have let's say example okay i have seen that the oil inside in the sump uh, is dirty okay it's uh, changing color have some uh, different with liquid inside okay some water and oil mixed let's say and i tell the chief engineer that uh, let's change it and he told me okay in uh, 2000 hours uh, we will replace this oil because he liked to make some uh, safe of oil because uh, the oil is uh, most uh, of the cost okay of the ship operation and the fuel so i say him okay we will change later but when i take the manual and the manual says that if you see any a change color of oil or you see a difference of mixture inside you must be checked it and replace the directly uh, what, what what you can say really in this uh, situation you must follow uh, the manual this is the most properly so this is how some problems occurs and sometimes uh, the problem happens and you don't know for what reason but any delay can uh, make further problems in the future it will be so small but it is so important really 
for all the parts because all the parts and all the body consist and work together with all spare parts and oil which is very very important oil inside the engine is like blood inside us just remember that because really it's very very important so uh, the most important sorry i will continue to the questions and give attention really to the quality of the work not of the work at all but on the quality to stay and understand the reason for what we do that and not only uh, like to take out and release all dismantle like that and you'll be a better engineer if you will give a uh, really time for that and also uh, if you give time to yourself you'll be better able to find the problems and to be more calm and find more better solutions with your mind so mitsubishi boilers uh, better than alborg likely to work on both yes varna uh, varma this is uh, really a nice experience to work with all the parts and also for us engineers it's uh, the handling procedure how to do that uh, it's very very interesting Ajmal, sir, good to see you again. How can we check low, low water level trip and high water level alarm? Uh, Ajmal, okay, we will check low, low water level trip uh, from the boiler, yes, you mean, and high water level alarm. Uh, correct, okay, I understand, from the boiler. You can give a different value from the computer if you like to check that your uh, alarm system is working or you can't uh, you can really simulate uh, the situation by real factors okay and also you can check the signal from the boiler you can dismantle uh, the checking point on top of the cover of the level uh, indicator and make some bridge there to see if the alarm is activated or you can make it in real condition with changing the water level so sometimes uh, it's very nice to change the boilers and all the machineries so you can be uh, checked all the things it's very interesting but in most cases this is uh, how we check the alarms you can check them in real condition you can check by simulation from the computer but mostly we do all that uh, there is a schedule in the PMS program we have a very nice program which show us exactly what to do and how to do it so let's see here the next question uh, what is this? Ah. akash hi i just joined the live chat i love your channel thank you could you tell me how to extract tire roots if they are broken from an engine extract tie rods okay okay i have listened that some tie rods are really broken from an engine but these tie rods uh, you mean that keeps the cylinder cover correct akash if that it depends where where, where the tie rod uh, broken If it broken mostly these tie rods uh, they broke 
on that I have seen, okay? I have seen some pictures and we discussed also with chief engineer. They broke on the place that connect with the main frame of the engine. We have the cylinder head with the exhaust valve on the top, the cylinder head, the jacket, the cylinder liner, and on the cylinder head with uh, the main frame, these long uh, tie rods, yes, they broke on the frame, exactly on the frame. And it's really, really uh, difficult to be uh, alert about that. So, Akash, I, uh, it happened to you this kind of uh, problem. It's really important to discuss this about. Uh, I know that there is uh, some special tools for extracting extracting the tie rods. Really, there is a, like like kind of uh, attach of some kind of uh, like ratchet, and uh, with some spanner you can really dismantle them but if the tie rods will be broken inside the frame okay this is really a change uh, of maintenance really it's a different way and also if there is uh, any kind of remove these tie rods with a drill i don't know if there is so powerful drills we need to use some drills like uh, cobaltium drills, which is hard drills. And if we will make some drilling and we attach some extractor like that, if it's possible to make some extractor, but anyway, it is prohibited to make any welding to the tie rod. I don't, and I don't know also if uh, the man BMW will be allowed to such work uh, on the engine to weld something to the broken tie rod if it's possible and to turn it by uh, some wrench or something it's really also a big problem that can happen really because inside the engine we know we have explosion and all the parts have the tendency to expand okay all these tie rods it's under pressure under really really great pressure so akash tell us something some information about that so we will be also alerted but one time i remember uh, when i was in the ice class ship a third engineer I make my round also a second engineer and I check the stats uh, when the engine was stop. Let's say this is the stat and I pass there and with small adjustable, I just hit to see if uh, the stat and the nut is properly set and it's not moving or playing. Okay, so you can determine something like that in any side but better it to do that when the engine is stop and also what you can do if you have a uh, normal engineers must have a good flashlight and when you are passing through the stats uh, parts that is uh, like uh, tie rods you will check closely there on the bottom okay le let's see this is the tie rod and this is the main frame you must check here on the connection that make with the frame and there is uh, the point where these tie rods will broke on the connections uh, on the connections on the start of uh, the thread this is the point that we will have the breakage because this is the most uh, most soft part of uh, these tie rods so when you passing through the engine you can determine and check by your eyes to stay a little bit like that steady so you can see that there is a move and 
there is any problem. So Varma, what is the maintenance on water level transmitter on the border? Normally, okay, normally if you do not have any problem and your water level transmitter it's uh, working properly, uh, it's maintenance free, but all the spare parts have a lifespan about uh, 10 after 10 years uh, everything uh, will be overheated all the parts inside will be damaged for sure and in most cases 10 years is the maximum after that all these level transmitters start to become crazy and in the last ship uh, we have some problem like that uh, before I come on board, so the level transmitter was shown a uh, high boiler water level and the boiler tripped or show low, 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 low water level, low, low normally or high, high must be tripped the boiler. And uh, it's very, very important that one. So you must have always a spare part, a level transmitter or uh, the electronics that is inside for the level transmitting uh, on the panel that is located uh, on the boiler. And I can make a video to show you just what break, what broke and uh, you will see also and know which one is uh, for the level transmitter so Ajmal, thank you for the information, sir. Why COPT only uses vacuum condenser and other purposes uses atmospheric condenser? COPT uh, only uses vacuum condenser. Correct, all the COPT exhausts, yes, go to the vacuum condensers. Uh, the atmospheric condenser uh, which is there is injector okay also the injector is close to the vacuum condenser so uh, there is a vacuum inside the condenser the atmospheric condenser uh, means that have atmospheric pressure this is the difference and atmospheric condenser mostly use uh, for cooling down the steam, the returns of the steam and send them to hot well tank from the line of uh, six kilos steam. Varma, same problem during cargo operation, the boiler trip many times and it was very problematic. Please do make video and is there any blow through method for the same? Okay, that I have listened from that, guys, because we discussed that problem uh, for the boiler trip. Sometimes, yes, these uh, electronics, they're really, really crazy. It's like Christmas tree. And at that point, they use only one boiler for discharging operation. And what they do also, uh, they switch off the panel of the boiler of the one that have problem because when the other boiler with the problem was on working condition online uh, the other boiler was also affected from that condition really this was observed and also i like to share i like to go deeper in these things uh, of the boilers which is really really important but for all this, for sure, we need a lot of time, a lot of hours of reading. And what else we can do when we stay on board? OK, we read for sure. But really, that was the solution for that case. And also, I have listened that uh, the electrician, uh, he breached that sensor, OK? after that and was working the sensor was working uh, so after that the spare part coming i will make for sure this video this will be my next video for uh, this level alarm trip 
and what can cause also to the boilers. Uh, this will be my next video for sure. But sometimes really, uh, the most of the times that these things will happen is before discharging, really. Some crazy things happen. I don't know, the electronics, maybe they are crazy from the magnetic field of the land. But when we are far, far in the sea, there is nothing to happen. There is everything calm, everything working good. I don't know what is going on. <laughs> Sometimes I remember also when I was second year apprentice engineer, uh, when we arrived to USA, we have always problems uh, with the elevator. The elevator st start to become crazy. I don't know really what is uh, going on. Probably it's the magnetic fields which crazy the electronics inside. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we will discuss that. And guys, also, it's very, very nice if you share your experience, what you have faced uh, on board. It's very, very interesting because all your experience that we have together, it's uh, very, very nice to share. So we can think about that, what's going on, and we can be more problematic. And we will try to find some solutions and also to read better and also to be better prepared for that. Sometimes also, Varna, what is happening uh, on board? Uh, if somebody do not have a good mood, let's say that chief engineer afraid something, uh, I don't know what, maybe in the inspection or something like that, he became crazy. Uh, also, uh, most of the things uh, go wrong, something like that. Let's say uh, he say we will pass the inspection, we will pass the inspection. After that, coming more trouble, <laughs> broke a bump or something else. <laughs> Hello, Ivo. Hello, increased of discharge gases of one cylinder. Increase discharge gases. Uh, gases, maybe temperature increases from one cylinder. Evo. If it's from one cylinder only, that means you have some problem with the fuel valves, probably. Uh, there is not proper injection of uh, the fuel inside and there is afterburn of the fuel or the fuel valve is not opening at the proper pressure so it will open on the lo lower pressure okay before when the pump strongs it's open earlier so the fuel is injected inside and the burn procedure take more time more time and also what can lead for that that uh, if the injection is earlier the burning and the explosion take place earlier okay so this will be will have a longer time of burning inside the cylinder so this will produce more temperature and uh, not so proper gases the fuel will not burn uh, as much uh, burn exactly in the cylinder uh, this is one of the main problem that you can face also what probably can happen also uh, every time the engine you have to you to stroke engine or four stroke engine this is very important if you have two stroke engine you must always check uh, when the ship make a stern or a head you must check the lamp that is uh, lit on and uh, it's four stroke engine okay for two stroke engine you must check that your engine and your cylinders is all working ahead or astern it's very very important but in four stroke engines yes uh, in one cylinder probably is fuel valve but before you check the fuel valve 
check the uh, exhaust gas temperature sensor sensor or uh, the thermometer make a calibration of the th thermometer and after check uh, the fuel valve but if you have really smoke it's the fuel valve for sure uh, sedic no i have never worked with malaysians seafarer no i work only with filipinos and greek uh, russians and ukrainian Ajmal, I have seven ban bar air on board for service. Then how will we check CO2 system relief lifting at 206 bar relief lifting? Uh, CO2 systems normally uh, in previous company also was coming a person from personal from uh, ashore okay and was assigned for that kind of uh, testing but really with seven bar on board on service you cannot check a 206 bar system for sure but as i remember uh, in all my previous contracts cso2 system we have we had in cold uh, ice class ship weather we have this uh, co2 system yes which was checked by uh, sure personal varma can you explain something about starting air distributor of managing related problems really varma uh, I have not encountered any problems with air distributor of managing uh, really what we can see from there maybe a stack something it's a very very strong system okay if you have a warm parts inside for sure uh, maybe the engine will not start but uh, really i never counter with problem with uh, such kind of problem with starting air only one time uh, accidentally a valve was closed from from vibration and that was uh, the only problem that engine was not starting even if you close uh, the static air distributor the engine cannot start uh, also with emergency control because this is uh, the most important for the engine starting the air distributor which distributes the air to one starting valve and from there the 30 kilos air will be entered to only one cylinder and start the engine yes evo poor fuel injection yes poor fuel injection correct Ajmal relief valve relief valve yes you cannot test that valve uh, since you don't have uh, this kind of uh, and this kind of pressure also Sidic uh, as I see uh, make your test have a ohm meter from electrician and also continue to test uh, i have some picture but mostly this done electricians and also uh, the maker test for the motors uh, done also by electrician i have seen how they done there is a for mega test there is a ohm meter uh, device and also for continuously also there is a some machine which also tests uh, this continuity test. I have also some pictures. In case if there is no lakey, uh, okay, we can make it. But uh, really, it's very very important to have electrician on board because they are most more more experienced uh, in such work with electrical parts and they know some things. 
some uh, details that we engineers do not counter. That's why it's really, really important to have electrician. Piston stuck in cylinder liner of main engine coming out with liner. How to extract with engine room crane? Piston stuck in the cylinder liner. Whoa. This is also really, really big problem. Okay. Uh, if it's stuck inside, what we can do? <laughs> this really, really possible to happen. Yes, but this really, really big problem. It's possible for sure to come out. So, but you must calculate the weight of uh, the engine room crane that it can lift all this weight together. And also for me, it never happened. If it happened to you, can you explain please and share also your knowledge? But what I can to do, okay, what I, I was trying to do with that one, if happened to me, I just uh, overhaul the cylinder head together the exhaust valve, which is about two and five uh, tons, if I believe, uh, something like that. It depends, okay, it depends uh, how much is the weight, okay, together. But most of the cranes can lift exhaust valve and cylinder head together. So we remove that one and then we release the piston from the bottom of the cross head and we also release the stuffing box and then we will lift uh, the piston and the cylinder liner together with together yes together with the jacket all, all together but after that we will need a cylinder liner for sure and a piston uh, that we have all the ships must have that uh, spares uh, this is the most uh, important spares that we need to have so if you have experience on such problem explain for sure you cannot cut you cannot stay and cut just uh, these uh, solid parts it's really really big and also it's really really dangerous Yes, it's a really bad experience. Maybe this is the worst thing that uh, can happen on board. This is uh, probably happened due to poor lubricity or maybe uh, the damage on some, also the fuel contamination. What what ship is that? <laughs> Varma, maybe this is very old ship, also no good, not so good maintenance on board. But really, this seems like this is very, very old ship. Uh, Evo, my position is second engineer on board, second engineer. Zizu, thank you. Zdorova, привет, привет. <laughs> Nikolai, Nikolai, ho ho, good day, Mike, how are you, how are you feeling, good, 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 Nikolai, I will go to voyage for uh, January, uh, as chief engineer, okay, I have still some time, but I will try, so Varma, it's 99 build, okay, it's uh, already, or, a lot of years, really. 19 years, or oh, almost. It's a really, really old, yes, ship. It's tired ship. But anyway, uh, I have worked in 89, 89 years old, uh, 1989. And no, we have not faced such a problem. But really, maybe this is a, a bad maintenance really of the ship i do not believe that if everything is proper this can happen uh, on a engine this is a very very rare situation and this shows that uh, there was 
not so good maintenance and maybe not maintenance at all that the company save a lot of uh, things on spare parts and also there is some dead, dead dogs that was lost or there is not proper set of lubricator and lubricity and also maybe there was not proper design of uh the lubricity the lubricity for that kind of the ship yes spare parts it's really true it's uh, really really important but that we have avoid in our company uh, that also save uh, the seafarers from such uh, situations which really, really bad, and I do not hope to everyone to counter this problem. To no one, to no one to counter this problem is real. So some companies, yes, they save money, but they save money on our bugs, on our uh, lives, on, and on our health. We must not uh, live and give this situation because we are uh, professionals and we do not like to work in such an environment. Nikolai, Nikolai, uh, I work uh, for Athenian sea carriers uh, in this moment. I have worked in uh, Tsakos, Tsakos company, Blue Star Ferries, and uh, I'm always open to any uh, any company. Uh, it's very interesting to work with uh, different companies. Uh, also, you can learn the system that they have. And also, I try to take uh, the best things from each company and go on, go further, go forward. <laughs> So guys, try, if you're looking for any company, try to find the company that represent you and yourself and you will be safe there. Uh, and also everything must be changed uh, from us. So in the future, we have uh, a better environment to work, a safe environment and everything starts from there. Uh, and also uh, what policy have the company it's really, really important and we must appreciate if the company try to improve and make something better if you see that uh, you are suffer there and it's better it's time to turn the page and move uh, move further and to find what is really uh, for you. Akash, incinerator refractory keeps falling off. How to put it so that it stays firm? If the refractory, if the main refractory that was uh, built from the factory, it's falling off, uh, that means that your incinerator is working a lot and also that means that temperatures that increase there it's really really big so the refractory cannot stay long it's normal uh, the refractory always will be falling off but if your build good and i have videos in my previous videos for incinerator which i will make also playlist if i have if i if i have not made still and you can find the details there uh, which is also very, very interesting. But try uh, to keep the same lines that uh, the incinerator have inside, the proper building uh, of the incinerator, that the lines, I mean, the all the blocks is separated. The, try to not cover these lines because there is also for expansion because this refractory 
just imagine if you have uh, the wall which is like this it's plates inside and in the middle there is a line this line is for the expansion due to uh, temperature differences and try to leave them try to leave the cooling uh, open because there are some openings for the cooling do not close them but check the videos for sure they will be really really helpful for you uh, some of the videos i will try to put here after we end this live so you will can check how to build but i have made a lot of videos for the incinerator and you can find everything there and a lot of things i have tell for the incinerator zizu if engine room has ums does it mean that engineer can be outside the engine room always and come there in event of alarm maintenance fill logbook or any engineer must be always in engine room watch look if the engine room is in ums mode uh, this means yes that engineer can stay outside yes correct and come there in the event of alarm yes entry the logbook correct uh, no if in ums yes you can stay uh, but you must be in the place that you will stay must be uh, the alarm also okay from the system so you can hear the alarm but in ums yes you can stay on your cabin or all the system now all the alarm systems is also in the crew smoking room in the mess rooms everywhere or in the gym also there is alarm uh, evo i prepare to work in the tanker vessels because this is uh, the vessel that i mostly uh, have uh, more experience and i stay more time i really like the way and the system uh, that is there because it is like army something like that there uh, you know exactly what you do and for what reason no i zizu i mostly work in unmanned engine room in month and room i was uh, in the passenger ships passenger ships yes we have man engine room because we was passing close to the islands so uh, close to the islands the, there must be always a man crew which will monitor and prepare the engines akash i am 34 years old Now in December, I will have a birthday. Thirty-four. I will be. I will be. So guys, I will stay seven minutes more. <laughs> Do you know about water ingress alarm testing? What kind of, the, of this testing is ingress? alarm testing no i don't know it's interesting what kind of this testing it is manoi ingress zizu what do you burn in incinerators in incinerators uh, we burn mostly we burn rugs papers uh, some oily rags but not too much some plastics which is uh, we have a poster on the incinerator panel and also we have some plastic some categories which we can burn and which we cannot and in which temperatures mostly it's paper it's uh, some wood maybe some wood but uh, other things no we didn't burn other things uh, yes this is the most of the things 
<laughs> Andre, thank you. Thank you very much. How many years, uh, Ivo, you work on the ships? Uh, now maybe it's four or five years, something like that. Four to five years. It's not too much. Just imagine for uh, going on pension, it's total 17 years. But I still have uh, a long road uh, forward. <laughs> Akash, which is the best employment website for seafarers? Ah, yes, very nice. Yes, I will share it with you. Uh, I will find it now. See. Ah, jobs at sea. I will show what site I was looking for. Uh, you can see this site here for looking some jobs for employment, if you like, that I was looking. Uh, this is for international uh, crewing. They have also some things. This is from Fastream. But one more site uh, also you can see here. One moment. Ccareer.com. Also, I will give you this. And from there, you can see a lot of things. It's interesting site. Uh, here. Also, this site. Okay, they said, Robson, how do you work on Sundays? Ah, and you mean on board the ship, Robson? You mean on board the ship? These guys, these two sites, it's okay. And from there, you can find another site. But these most sites are that I trust for searching uh, companies about that. And you can look there also and find something good. Yes, uh, the sludge, yes, the zoo sludge also burned, yes, incinerator, yes. Uh, sometimes uh, we work on Sundays, and most of the Sundays uh, coming on, uh, we are in the port, we are discharging sometimes, and we work for sure. Uh, the other Sundays we do not work. Uh, my work is to make around on the morning also sometimes i go for around uh, evening before sleep i check also the engine the engine room uh, with uh, the guys that going down ah the second uh, okay the second side I will post also here. Okay, this one. And I like also to make runs with the guys to see the what is going on on the engine. So it will be 99% uh, that everything is uh, in good condition, that uh, we will sleep uh, properly without any emergency situation. And uh, sometimes, okay, if there is some emergency situation, we work on Sundays, uh, it doesn't matter. The most important is that we have a safe engine room and safe uh, sailing through the oceans. This is very, very important. So normally on Sundays that, that I make a morning and evening one round, and that is all. Robson. <laughs> so guys, use these sites for searching and good shares for you all. So I hope you will find your uh, company of your dreams and you will enjoy also uh, your sailing through the world. So guys, thank you that you stay today with Adventure Story. Hope you like this live. And I will try to continue to make more lives. 
thank you for your uh, staying here on this live and all the lives. Thank you that you are participate always. Uh, I really, really appreciate uh, your comments, your support that you view here in this channel. Uh, hope you like it. Hope you the best. See you. <laughs> See you guys. Thank you so much. Bye bye.